Take it, God. Take dominion. Take authority, God. Take authority, God. Rule in this place over every spirit. Rule in this place over every spirit. Rule in this place over every spirit. Yes, Lord Jesus. 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 Go by Sita and Amana de Diosa. Go to the Masika and Amana de Diosa. Go to the Masika and the Mora de Amana de Asia. Go to the Mara de Amana de Asia and Amana de Diosa. Yes, Lord Jesus. 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 Go by Go by Come on, everybody, clap your hands and begin to give him a praise. Clap your hands and begin to give him a praise. Come on, clap your hands and give him a praise. Clap your hands and give him a praise. Come on and bless him. 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 Open up your mouth and bless him. Open up your mouth and bless him. Open up your mouth and bless him. Come on, bless him out of your spirit. Come on, it's time to bless him. Bless him out of your spirit. Come on, press out of your spirit. Come on, bless out of your spirit. Come on, we won't stop till you bless it. We won't stop till you bless it. We won't stop until he's satisfied. Animal shut up. Hallelujah. Come on, Zion, clap your hands. Come on, Zion, clap your hands. Yes, so called a boss at the head. Yes, so called a boss at the head. Sultan of Abbasanda. Come on, you panicking God. I didn't say panicking God, I said praise Him. I said praise Him. This is how He births revival in your spirit. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Kosala of Abbasanda. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory! 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 You get it, God. Glory. Glory. You get it, God. You get it. You get the glory. You get the glory. You get the glory. You get the glory. Glory.
God, we want it. God, we want it. God, we want it. God, we want revival. God, we want it. God, we want it. We want revival. God, we want it. We know if you bring it to us, it'll hit our family. It'll hit our church. God, we want it. It'll hit our finances. We want revival. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes, 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 yes. yes. Bless your name, Jesus. Get your Bibles if you can. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you, God. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. We came to please you, God. Hallelujah. Came to please you, God. Came to please you. We came to please you. Seek to please you. Hallelujah. So say yes. Da 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 da
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you can turn your Bibles with me to the book of Acts. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father. Been reading in the book of Acts. Tenth chapter, the tenth chapter of the book of Acts. <clears throat> I said on last week that we are entering into, already have entered into another realm of the importance and the purpose of the presence of the Lord bringing us to a place that we have never been before. Our hearts and our minds must begin to pursue after the Lord for every nature of his spirit. Last night, as I laid upstairs in the office, I could not sleep. And I can just hear the Lord speaking about pursuing every characteristic of his presence. When his presence comes upon us and his presence comes in our midst, it is coming with his likeness in it. With the likeness of the Lord in it. When you look at his likeness and things that he has done through the power of prayer. Through the power of prayer. And we understand that prayer is not just us making a sound with our voices as much as it is us throwing a spirit and a power with our very souls. I'm learning as I go along that that prayer is a power that's thrown from within. And that's why when I look at some of you all and I say pray and I say press in, because you people of religion, you do it your own way. Because you really don't have the power to throw it. Because it, 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 it is something that is, that is immediately activated without suggestion when you possess it. Nobody have to say, clap your hands. Nobody have to say, open up your mouth. And if they do say, open up your mouth or clap your hands, you readily and immediately respond because you know that it is, it is the nature of God and it is, it is his way, the avenue that he has prepared for us to be effective in prayer. When I look at 
all of what we think we possess. A couple of things I wrote down last night is when he said to me, he had been dealing with me about the blood of Jesus and about the blood being applied. And so I was, I was trying to go in the, in the same avenue that, you know, most of all of us go in when you, the Lord start dealing with you about the blood, you immediately start, you know, talking about and thinking about the, 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 um, the uh, attributes of the blood, applying the blood and, and, and pleading the blood. But he, he, he spoke something to me last night or brought it to my attention because that's what his presence does. His presence is to bring revelation to things that you do not know. And when you, when you receive the revelation of it, that's when you receive power. As long as you have just, just knowledge and no revelation of it, you don't have power. And so when he said to me, he said, the one thing that I want you to understand about the blood of Jesus is that it was a sacrifice. And that he gave his life and when the blood was shared, wasn't so much as him getting on the cross. But when the blood was shared, when that blood came out of him, that was a thing that struck a covenant with the characteristics of Jesus Christ. It made his power authentic, which means from that point on, Nothing that is done in his name could be denied. Because of the sacrifice. I want you to hear this today. And so he began to say to me. That the reason why most people. Don't have. Physical perseverance in prayer. The reason why. Most people just say I've been to prayer. Or I do pray. Or you, 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 you look around and, and you know and. People just look, you know, like they just, I'm just here and I'll just wait until the power fall. The reason why it's like that is because, because they don't understand that in order to cut a covenant with God, there must be sacrifice. See, the Lord could have called this prayer at nine o'clock at night, but it wouldn't have been a sacrifice. And what makes God now obligated to do what we are calling on him to do is because the sacrifice is there. God, I love you. See, let me help you with something. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, people said, well, you know what? People murdered people, they killed people, and yet they said they were Christians. Because... In order for there to be a victory, in order for there to be victory over the enemy, there must be bloodshed. And so the sacrificial lamb had not come yet. And because he had not come yet, then the people in the Old Testament were required to kill their enemy. Physically kill them. So when you get to the New Testament and then Jesus offering up his life, what he's trying to show us in so many words. When the Bible said he prayed in Gethsemane until the sweat poured from him as of drops of blood. The prayer that he was praying was a prayer of intercession, bringing his flesh realm into the will of God. His spirit wanted it. That's why you come to prayer. You come to prayer because your spirit wanted it. Your spirit wanted it. It's your flesh that keep trying to tell God, if it be your will, let the, well, why do I have to come to the church? And why can't I just pray at home? And why can't I just, you know, wake up when I get up and pray? Because there is a special recognition from the Lord, and nobody would ever make me believe anything different. That when you, when, you, when you pay the price of prayer to the point that your body don't feel like it, you don't feel like it. 
when you come into this place and you don't feel like clapping your hands. Those are the claps that torment the enemy because, because those are the ones that the Lord empowers. The praise that he empowers to shake the very foundation of the devil mother are the ones that are given in sacrifice because it's at that point he cuts the covenant. It's at that point, oh y'all. He doesn't expect for us to, 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 to physically kill ourselves. Come on somebody. Because the blood was already shared. Come on somebody. But we must exemplify the physical sacrifice that leads us into the level of drops of blood, sweat as of drops of blood. We must enter into the same, the same tenacity and the same persistence as Jesus did in order to fellowship with the power that he has. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in you. I just, I just hear the Lord just keep saying fellowship with me. Fellowship with me. Just, stop trying to just come to prayer and just give me sweet worship. Fellowship with me. Oh, come on, somebody. Because we said, we said, well, you know, Lord, 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 you know, we, we, we want God to, we want God to, 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 to heal the sick. And, and, so, and, and so we've seen. We have seen, I have seen, I have seen, I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I have seen glimpses of, of victories and things that the Lord has done. But what he was saying to me last night is that you, you cannot become satisfied with where you are and what you have accomplished. Because the place, the place of the true intercessor is the place of all power. The place of the true intercessor is the place of all power. The place of the true intercessor is the place that when the enemy does what you say, when you tell him to. When, when, when Jesus came into the city and the legions ran out, they didn't say we'll come out tomorrow. He said come out now. God, I wish I had somebody to want to go to this level right here. Because you know what? You know what? We have to beg and plead with the enemy so much. It's because the devil knows there is no sacrifice. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. He knows. He knows there is no sacrifice. He knows that after five minutes, you're going to quit praying. He knows that after ten minutes, you're going to sit down. He knows that when you come in here tired, you're not going to praise God until you feel like it. He knows that you're in your emotions. You haven't tapped the place of sacrifice that says, I'll pray until I fall out. I'll pray until I have no breath in me. I will pray until I lose my voice. I'll pray with cancer. I'll pray with pneumonia. I'll pray with the flu. Let me help you with something. The Lord knew that you were going to be attacked in every area of your body when he called you to pray. He didn't say pray if you feel like it. He said pray without ceasing. He didn't say pray in the good days. He said men are to always pray. So now we're going, we, we, we just got to do this. The life of the person, deal with us, God. Deal with us, Father. Deal with us, Father. Deal with us. Things he tells us to do, it's like he's bringing even more clarity. Just like when he said, everybody wear a white shirt. Some of y'all didn't hear it. But there's some people in here that heard it. And put on a shirt they wanted to put on. He keeps trying to show us. He keeps he keep trying to show us. And I got to say this. That it ain't even about the shirt. Watch this. Hallelujah. He said 5 o'clock. Then you show up at 530. It ain't even about the 5. What is it about? He's trying to find out. Can you be led? 
Okay, I'm not hearing you. Because see, a lot of stuff that you're praying about and saying, God, I want you to bless my finances. Everything that's going to happen to you and your family and your life is going to be about obedience and a divine connection. It's going to be about the guidance of the spirit. And if he can't lead you now to put on a t-shirt and he can't lead you now to come on time, then what can he lead you to? It's about being led, Sister White. That's what it's about. It's about being led, Tanya. It ain't about nothing else. It's about, it's about, can you do what I tell you to do? When I tell you to do it. Oh, I'm not hearing nobody say nothing right there. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing right there because, because God going to help us today. I said he going to help us today. He's going to help us today. We put our signature on the card and give him our social security number. And it's called a job and we're never late. God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I feel the Holy Ghost because we're expecting a paycheck. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me in here. Whatever they tell you, you can't wear to work. You don't wear it because you're expecting a paycheck. But what about what God is about to do in your life? He's not trying to give you a paycheck. He's trying to give you e eternal value. He's trying to give you something that shakes the very foundation of hell. He's trying to give you something that makes the devil afraid of you. Who am I talking to today? He's trying to give you something that protects you, that leads you and guides you. He's trying to put you in a place that you cannot be handled by satanic forces. Sit down, let me just, let me do this. Hmm. So then, help us, Father. Help us, Father. Give it to us, Lord. So he says, in the 10th chapter of the book of Acts, in the 10th chapter in the book of Acts, he says, now living at Caesarea, there was a man whose name was Cornelius, a centurion captain of what was known as the Italian Regiment. I'm gonna read line by line and stop there because as many times as I've heard this story, this is the first time that the Lord has revelated it to me. Line by line, mother. Because he said the first thing I want the people to recognize and when he was giving it to me, the first thing I want you to recognize is that this man was not a punk. He was, he was, he was a captain of a regiment he was a captain of a regiment this man had position and posture and power his own power his own power see there we go right there there we go right there when God when God gets ready to bring us into a level he compares he compares what we have had to what we have had and please hear this because God's talking to me right now he compares what we have had available and made available to the enemy of the longevity of our ability to the level of our sacrifice okay what am i talking about right there what about it? god will always call people for a prayer assignment who at one time has been very valuable to the enemy see see first of all first of all I don't care what you've been through. You cannot be a punk and be called to intercession. He calls you because he already knows your ability because he has seen the way you have permitted the enemy to use you. So he already knows how big you can become. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost like that. He already knows when you was a drug dealer, you wouldn't stop. I'm not, come on somebody. He already knew when you was on crack, you wouldn't stop. You wouldn't do anything, but every day you would get your hit. He said, that's the person I want right there. Come on somebody, I gotta feel, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. And so what he does is, he waits 
until you become something in that world and then he calls you to this world and then what he's about to do in you it brings you to a level where you gotta break that down give that up not even recognize the power that you have coming into his obedience see the reason why the reason why it is it is difficult for us to for us to come into the obedience of the spirit of God is because we we have a way we got a way and the captain probably got up every day and did his thing and went to war and all of that but this particular day the Bible said the Bible said a devout man who venerated God and treated him with referential obedience. Now watch this. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. As did all his household. Watch this. And he gave much alms to the people. Now here we go. This is the line I want you to see. And prayed continually to God. He prayed continually to God. A man, I want you to see the line up, held position, held stature, held some kind of honor, gave reverence to God. His whole household lined up with God. And he was obedient to God. And then he prayed continually. Okay, we're going to go over that one more time. Because I believe the Father's trying to give us something here. So let me just paraphrase that. You're an excellent employee. You come to work on time. You go to breaks on time. You come back on time. You pay your bills on time. You provoke your house to live holy and those that you cannot provoke in your house to live holy they know without a shadow of a doubt that you are holy you you reverence God you're obedient to God and then you continually pray now what is all of that about what does all of this mean what, what, what is he what is he trying to what he, what he was trying to show me, what he was trying to show me is an ingredient for the, for the spiritual divine connection. The, the, um, the, um, the power that transcends the how-to. You know, like if I, if I, if I was, if I was, if I wanted Emory to go from from the keyboard to tell Jared something, I would say, go and tell Jared. And he would get up off the keyboard, most likely. He would come around here. He would come up the steps, walk through the chairs, step down, step up, walk through the chairs, walk back up through there, and tell Jared. Those are the means of natural transition. The ingredients that I just read you is the place that God is getting ready to put us in where we do not need conventional transportation. Okay, I'm, I, I, I'm just... You know, I'm going to teach it on this level. If don't nobody get it but one person. Because, because, because uh, 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 the revival, the revival that God is talking about is not, is not just reviving something old. It's not, it's not, um, it's not just revival, it's, 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 it's restitution too. It's not just revival, it's, it's, it's something being added to what I lost. It's like he's going to give me back what I lost and then add something to it. 
So I couldn't get a whole lot of people to praise God about that because they don't believe that. They don't believe that the reason why the Lord has called this revival is because the enemy has taken something away from you. He's taken away your fire, but God's going to give it back to you with interest. That means you're going to have more than you had before you had. Oh, God, I wish. I just want somebody to praise him right there for restitution. Sit down for a minute. Sit down for a minute. There was a patch of people right over here. There was a patch of people right over here. I'm praying that you get it. Right back there in that section. Right back there in that section right there where that lady is with that pink sweater on. Right over there. Because when the Holy Ghost said praise him, that's what he means. He don't mean sit there and look. He don't mean sit there and look. I keep telling you, it's the sacrifice of praise that empowers you. Because whatever you praise him for, when you make the sacrifice to praise, you cut covenant with God. That means he has to give it to you. He got to do it. Oh. Oh. Jesus. I don't feel like praising, but this time I will. I don't usually shout like that, but this time. But this time I will. Sit down for a minute. Oh my God, I gotta. Listen to this. Listen to this. 
Listen to this. He said, and he prayed continually to God. But listen to this. The third verse says, about the ninth hour, about 3 p.m. of the day, we're talking about the man who prayed continually, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God entering and saying to him, Cornelius, the person that prays continually, the person that prays continually is the person that will, will, will receive open vision. The person that... Will. I didn't say can. I didn't say it was possible to. You will. See open vision. He called him by his name. This is the thing I want you to see. And he, gazing intently at him, became frightened and said, What is it, Lord? And the angel said to him, Your prayers and your generous gifts to the poor have come up as what, people? He got a visitation from the Lord because what he gave and his prayers as a sacrifice came up before the Lord. Watch this. He says here, Lord Jesus, and now send men to Joppa and have them call for and invite here a certain Simon whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside. I want you to see this. When your prayers come up before God as a sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. That's why David said, I will offer unto him a sacrifice of praise. See, In other words, mother, the praise got to cost me something. In other words, when I, just, when I just offer God up a praise and I just go to saying, God, I thank you, God, I praise you. And you know, and I feel it. It doesn't turn into the sacrifice until I physically wear my body out to the point of exhaustion until I feel like I can't hardly say it another time. In other words, then that means we must, we must press in the praise and in the prayer to physical limitation before it is considered a sacrifice. Y'all come on somebody. That's why, that's why, that's why prayer, prayer can't be 10 minutes and 7 minutes with God. Because it takes you all the 7 minutes almost just to kill yourself. To the point that you are at the place of sacrifice. Somebody said, well what does that mean? You know, he, just, he, just, he just said a sacrifice, a sacrifice of praise. A sacrifice of prayer. Because it is is that ram that sent him from the place of it will happen to send your servants now. Okay. So I said, well, how does that, how does that, how does that, how does that apply to us? How does that apply to us? Because, because Cornelius was instructed 
by the angel of the Lord to send your servants now in search of a man named Simon Peter. We have no servants, but we have available to us ministering angels. When we offer God up a sacrifice of prayer, it gives us immediate authority to sit right here in this building and send your ministering angels now. You don't hear what I'm saying. I can send Michael right now and break free any family member of mine that is held in bondage because when I offer God a sacrifice of prayer, it gives me power to send now. Go now. Y'all, 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 he didn't just, he didn't, he didn't just tell him to go. He didn't just say go. The, the sacrifice of prayer give you names, give you places, give you cities, give you houses. No, you don't hear what I'm saying. I wish you heard what I just said right there. What am I trying to say? He didn't have to say, Lord, wherever he is, he gave him his name. Y'all, come on, somebody. He gave him the place. Come on here, somebody. See, you waiting too long on the blessing. The stuff that you're praying for, you're praying in the atmosphere. God, do something. God, break something. He's trying to get us from the place of God, do something. Into the realm of, let me speak this to you. The man's name is Willie Jenkins. He's on 69th in Manhattan. That's where I want you to be by this time tomorrow. That's the kind of power I'm talking about. the name, the power of the place, the power of the thing. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Because anytime, anytime the prayer, the prayer has a spiritual void, the vision will show up. You don't hear what I'm just saying to you right there. Cornelius was a captain with a spiritual void. Even though he prayed continually, mother, there was still something in his spirit that was missing. You don't hear what I'm saying. What I'm trying to tell you is whatever is missing in your life, God's already handpicked the person. The place that you're supposed to receive it in. I just want somebody to receive this today because I feel like I'm preaching out of my mind today. God's already got the name of the person that's got your next level. He knows where they are. He's waiting on you to offer him a sacrifice of prayer. I'll show you what they look like. I'll describe them to you. I just need you to pray. finish hearing this. Oh, 
Your future is bound up till you pray. You can't take another step until you offer him the sacrifice of prayer. Your next level is bound up. He said, because no man will get the glory but me. And that's why I've tied it up in divinity. And if you want to go to your next level, you're going to have to come to me and get it. And you're going to have to come to me every day, all day. You're going to have to offer up a sacrifice of prayer until I reveal to you the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom. Until I give you divine wisdom, divine understanding. You're going to come to me. I'm not going to let you have it without me. Oh, sha. Sit down. Let me tell you this. Let me get to this. I got to finish this because I'm on a pattern for 12 weeks. Said, and when the angel of the Lord had left him, when the angel of the Lord left him, he called two soldiers and a God fearing man, and he rehearsed to them what they were to say when they got there. I don't know where y'all want to go, but I know where I'm going. He rehearsed to them what they were to say. When they got there. Jesus. Not Lord do something. Not Lord just send your ministry angels of protection. No Michael. Let me tell you what you ought to do. Because angels are spirits that are sent. On assignments. You don't hear me. I'm just trying to get some. They are. They are. They are divine messengers. <laughs> and they don't run with their own message. They run with the message of the spirit realm. So therefore, you got to give it to them. You don't hear me. I wish I had somebody. See, what you don't understand that there are ministering angels that are standing guard over every last one of us. I'm not hearing you say, and you know what? They have been sitting there dormant. No place to go. Nothing to do. Because somebody won't pray until God give you a vision that you may turn and speak to your angel and say, I said go now. You can't grab that and I understand that. You can't grab that. You can't grab that. Mm. He rehearsed to them what they were supposed to say when they got there. I want you to see this. He told them what to do. We are not just praying. We are throwing power. Okay, wait a minute. And the Bible said, the next day, as they were still on their way and were approaching the town. So let me help you right there. Stop. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. At 3 o'clock, Cornelius offered up a sacrifice of prayer. At that time, heaven was opened up for him. When Jesus died on the cross, let me bring this back to your remembrance. And he entered into that time of transition. When he returned back to heaven, heaven was opened. When he offered up the sacrifice, hell was open to him. Sacrifice, open. Sacrifice, open. That's the point I want you to get. Sacrifice, opened. Sacrifice, opened. The disciples went to jail. Yeah. 
and at midnight they prayed. Y'all not. And the other folk was over there praying. Sacrifice of prayer. Open. Y'all, 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 y'all. But see, the Bible said this, that while they were in prison, there was a garrison. There was a garrison set around their prison. That's four of the best army men that they have. You can't walk, the Bible said, and they walked through the garrison. No, you, you, don't, you don't hear me. I say, some, of y- some of y'all just looking like this. You don't understand what I'm talking about. That the very enemy that belongs to you, when you offer God a sacrifice of prayer, he will blind your enemy and let you walk right through. You don't hear what I'm saying. The door that's supposed to stay shut, it's got to come open. Sacrifice. Sacrifice of prayer, open doors where there is no door. Sacrifice of prayers when the man, when the sick man had the people that was his intercessors. And I'm gonna just paraphrase it, and the church was too crowded to get in to see Jesus. They didn't stop there. They went on top of the roof, tore a hole in the roof. Oh, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. God, I wish I had somebody. I wish I had somebody to hear this Holy Ghost. Father, I hear what you're saying. An intercessor, a person that offers a sacrifice of prayer, they stop at nothing. You don't hear what I'm saying. They ignore the fact that the door is shut because they already know there's another entry into this situation. I don't have to come through man's door. I can come through a supernatural door. What did the Bible say that happened to Jesus? When he was resurrected and they were in the upper room, he didn't have to come through the door. Let me show you something right quick. You remember when Jesus was piercing his side? Let me show you something. And uh, Thomas doubted. He doubted that it was Jesus. When he brought him to him, thank you, Jesus, and he forbid him to come to him, he said, put your hands in. And the Bible said that when he did that, the scripture said he immediately believed. What happened to him, sister? He didn't touch Jesus. He touched his sacrifice. He touched his intercession. When he stuck his when he stuck his hand in past the flesh, he stuck his hand inside of Jesus' intercession. He stuck his hand in his sacrifice. He stuck his hand where the blood came out. And it caused him to immediately believe. Maybe that's what's wrong with us. Maybe that's why we can't trust God. Because we have not got to the point of prayer that we touch his sacrifice. Because that is the place that causes you to immediately believe. You just come to prayer one morning and bam, now I believe. I believe him for anything. I believe him for everything. He said at the same time, brother, that he was offering up the sacrifice of prayer at three o'clock. Emory didn't have to get up and walk no more. I want you to hear this because the Bible states it clearly. 
while the servants was on their way. They ain't got that yet. You just, you just, you better understand this. You better understand. While they were on their way, the man that had offered the sacrifice of praise, the prayer that he prayed out of his spirit, jumped across the place. And while they were on their way, his sacrifice of prayer sent him on the roof. The person that's got your next level don't know that it's them. Your prayer got to send them on the roof. You don't hear what I'm saying? You can start praying until they'll get up and go on the roof. on the roof. Somebody got your miracle, but they don't know how to get it to you. You got to offer the sacrifice of prayer until you get them on their face before God and God will give them your name. I break spiritual apathy. I break spiritual laziness. Go get your destiny. Go get your destiny. Somebody say, when I offer a sacrifice of prayer, say it, when I offer a sacrifice of prayer, I will accept no distractions. When I offer a sacrifice of prayer, I will accept no distractions. Because the Bible said that when Peter went up on the roof to have to pray, while he was up there, mother, the Bible said he got hungry. Cornelius had already prayed that thing through. The spirit of the messenger was already on the way. And then a hunger devil jumped in. And the Holy Ghost said, no distractions. And it said, when he sat down to eat, God took him up in an open vision. Yo, I just, tell somebody, no distractions. No, no, no. Tell them what's coming my way will not be hindered. Let me tell you something. This. Oh, my shaka na balabaha. Oh, shala la balaha. Who believe it? It won't be hindered. Make that open confession right now. What's coming in my spirit, it will not be hindered. What's coming my way?
He's doing, he's doing a supernatural. Listen to the wordings in this revival and receive the wordings in this revival. He is doing supernatural things. And he is doing it through people that don't even like you. In this revival will be the season that your enemies will bless you. Oh, come on here, somebody. It's a supernatural thing. They don't even care for you. They don't even like you. As a matter of fact, somebody is prejudiced, but they're not going to even believe themselves. Why are they doing what they're doing for you? But your sacrifice of prayer is about to break down the walls of petition. Peter didn't like what he saw. Peter didn't like what he saw. But Cornelius had already prayed. No, you didn't get that. You didn't get that. You didn't get that. You didn't get that. Put yourself, put your own name in the place of Cornelius this time. When I say this, Peter didn't like what he saw. But it was too late because Cornelius had already prayed. God, I wish I had somebody. Woo. When they find out they got to bless you. They not gonna like what they see, but it's too late because God's got to respect and honor the sacrifice of prayer. It's too late. Cornelius had already came. It's too late. He prayed already. God told him, in our day and times, he told me, he said, suck it up. Rise, slay, and eat. Because you're going to give this boy what he coming looking for. Who are you to declare something that is unclean that I've called holy? Y'all ain't saying. See, the revelation in that is somebody looking at you that don't even think you're holy. They don't even think there's nothing to you. But they don't, listen, listen, they don't know that you got a weapon in your hand. And no matter what I may look like to you, I'm, I'm a person that's offering up a sacrifice of prayer. And when I offer the sacrifice, he calls me holy. I don't care what you think about me. He calls me holy. shake yourself right there shake yourself and praise him shake yourself and praise him for his holiness shake yourself and praise him for the power of the sacrifice of praise take your hands off of him satan let him go you can't hold us no more we will not become a traditional prayer meeting we will offer up a sacrifice of praise come 
Oh, give it to him. Give it to him right there. Give it to him with all of your might. Give it to him with all of your strength. You better give it to him. You better give it to him. Because it was a sacrifice of prayer that made Peter see a vision. You better give it to him right now. It was a sacrifice of prayer that made Peter get up and start preaching. And the Bible said that while he was preaching, the power of God, it fell on Cornelius. I'm talking to you today. Right now, the power of God, it's fallen on you. The power of favor, the power of divine connection. Receive it! Receive it! Receive it! it press into it you got it now he can't take it back I said the devil can't take it it's already gone Let me tell you something. Let me give you this little story. Let me give you something that you can, that you can mentally hold on to tangibly in our time to help you with this process of what I'm trying to say. When I was a little girl, I used to love kites. And so, I saved my money 
because they had this one big kite in the store in our neighborhood. And I kept saving money. Stay right there. I want you to hear this story. And I went and got this kite. And the first day that me and my friends put it together, I was running all over the place this time. It was just hitting the ground. It wasn't, it wasn't going nowhere. And uh, it came to us. It was a big kite. It came to us that your kite is hitting all over the ground. And until you get a win, if you try to fly it without a win, you will tear it up. And so, I would go out every day. I wanted to fly this car. And the day I went out, my friends weren't with me. They live on the one block over. You can go around the corner. And then the houses were small. And I felt the wind, and I started running with my kite. And it took off, Sister White. And the more the wind caught it, Tanya, I just, I just released the string. And before you know it, my kite was way out there. And a few minutes later, my friends came running around the corner. They said, we was over there, but we saw your kite. Okay, you better come over and hear what God is saying. That's the kind of praise and prayer that you got to give to God. Oh, you don't hear me. The revival is giving us the wind that we need. You got to release the string until your divine connection see your kite. Somebody give him a praise right there. You got to keep pressing. Release the string. More. More. The spirit of the Lord is saying more. Release it more. You just keep praying. Somebody going to see it. You just keep praising. Somebody going to see it. Take your seats because I got to give you this. Y'all got to sit down for this because I don't want you to hurt each other. But he gave me this scripture for you all. This will be your 12 week scripture. When I first came in here, I started to read it. And wisdom said, you read this scripture right now. You might as well turn out prayer. But our first half an hour, he gave me a strategy, Elder Boyd. I saw in the spirit, he brought some wisdom, spiritual wisdom. He said, the reason why we're going to win this time. I haven't even had a chance to talk to Elder Board or Dr. Morgan or Pastor or anybody about this. But I saw the Lord last night taking up this day. It's like he, he, he took the day up. He took the whole day up. Night and day. And the Lord began to show me some wisdom. That have you ever wondered. Why we've been doing this for almost 10 years. 
And we're in this season where it seems like you just, you just getting attacked and you just physically and just mentally. Because once the enemy knows your pattern, he's already at a place before you get there to attack you. And, and this will not be announced on flyers or anything. But there will be days that God will speak to us. And we will be here at 5 o'clock and then we will repeat the same thing at 7 o'clock in the evening. Because we have to throw the enemy off course. No. See, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right there. You got you to gotta surprise him. He got to think that we come in the 5 a.m. prayer and that's it. You don't hear what I'm saying. But when you make the announcement that tonight we're going again, God will shift our spirits. He will already be done girded us up. And the devil ain't got time to attack us because it's just like Cornelius. We done already threw it to 7 o'clock. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Somebody said revival. See y'all. I don't hear nobody talking to me right there. Somebody, Lord Jesus. Somebody said revival. Tell them we're going to win this time. We're going to win this time. We're going to win this time because, because too many times, too many times we walked in here at 5 a.m. and God has given us the victory. We walked out out of here with power and around about 4 or 5 o'clock the devil attacking us like we ain't never been to prayer. But he's a liar because this time we got something for you. The Lord has taken up this day. Somebody begin to give God a shout in here. Somebody begin to give God a shout. here that's it come on here that's it let the enemy know you're not the person that you were last Tuesday come on here
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As I read what will be our 12-week scripture, that we will read it in every service until the manifestation of the word of God come to pass before our very eyes. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. If you will listen diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, being watchful to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, the Lord your God shall set you on high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. If you heed the voice of the Lord your God, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your beast, the increase of your cattle, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall you be, your basket and your kneading trough. Blessed shall you be when you come in. And blessed shall you be when you go out. And the Lord spoke to me and said, this is what he did for us today. The Lord shall cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your very face. They shall come out against you one way. And they flee before you seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouse and in all that you undertake. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. Somebody bless God right there. Somebody bless God right there. Keep blessing him while I read. The Lord will establish you as a people. Holy to himself. As he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God. And walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see. That you are called by the name. And in the presence of the Lord. And they shall be afraid of you. Somebody bless the Lord right there. Somebody bless the Lord right there. You better bless him because he's what he's about to say. You gotta bless him like you believe it. And the Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity. Somebody bless him right there. surplus of prosperity through the fruit of your body of your livestock and of your ground and in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you the Lord shall open to you his good treasury the heavens to give the rain of your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands and you shall lend to many nations but you shall not borrow and the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. And you shall be above only. And you shall not be beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God. Which I command you this day. And I watch for to do them. And you shall not turn aside from any of the words. 
which I command you this day. In other words, you keep praising him until you see it come to pass. You will not change your mind about what God has just spoken. Now give him a shout if you believe it. Come on, let the believers praise him. Let the believers offer him a sacrifice of praise. I'm not going to change my mind about what the word says. Touch somebody and say, I'm not going to change my mind about what the word just said. Hold up. A surplus. A surplus. A surplus. A surplus of prosperity. A surplus of blessings. Everything my hands touch, he gonna prosper. Y'all don't believe that. Somebody need to praise him. That for the next 12 weeks, everything my hands touch. Oh, shot up, oh, it's a revival. It's a revival. It's a revival. It's a revival with restitution. That means for the next 12 weeks, everything that comes out of my belly, he gonna multiply. Everything that touch my hands touch. I will offer up a sacrifice of praise. My prayers will come up before him. Sacrifice of prayer. Hmm. Sacrifice of prayer. A sacrifice of prayer. Oh, how about you? That's the one that's going to pay you. That's the one you're going to get paid in. That's the one that's going to bring you an increase in a surplus. The sacrifice of prayer. I can stay asleep like everybody else. But I'm in a 12 week window. Hold your shot on my hand. Hold your shot. Hold me a seat in the body. The 12 weeks. Twelve is a number of establishment of the government of something. For twelve weeks he shall establish you as an intercessor. He shall seal your he shall seal your position. Somebody better give him a praise. He shall permanently fix you in a place that the enemy is going to be afraid of you who am I preaching to beside myself at the end of the 12 weeks he shall establish you in the kingdom as a mighty warrior
Gloria Bosha Mahal. Gloria Namania Sid Mahal. Gloria Mania Sarabaria Shitted Mahal. Gloria Coria Silver Mahal. Gloria Silver. Hoba Sands. Hoba Sands. Gloria Silver of the Ocean. When the Lord declared this, He spoke this. And he starts speaking it to me. I said, God, you, you're about to do, you're about to do incredible, supernatural things. But that's what I heard him talking about, not without a sacrifice. Not without a sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. Not without a sacrifice. He started taking me, Mother, through the word. And showing me. The people who prayed. At the hour of sacrifice. Jesus went three times. Said, y'all can't pray with me one hour. And they could not because their time had not come for the prayer of sacrifice. When your season come and your time come for the prayer of sacrifice, it is a direct indication that you are on your way to spiritual authority. You are on your way to spiritual power. And he will speak it. And he will cause you. Whew, he will cause you to move in realms in him. Thank you, Jesus. I left here last week. It was last Tuesday. And I've been having pains and pains. Still going. And God declared this 12-week revival. I called other boy up. And I said, I have a doctor's appointment. I want you to go with me to the doctor. I want you to pray with me. I'm going to the doctor. They took sonograms and MRIs. And the lady looked at me and she said, how are you standing up? Are you in pain? I said, all the time. She said, you have a fibroid as big as a 16-week pregnancy. And the devil said, well, you might as well cancel the revival. And I told the devil, we will preach with this tumor. And you don't hear me. No, no, you don't hear me. So when I tell you to praise God, I'm preaching with pain. But I know what God... Help! Hallelujah! These are the ones that count. I, oh, Jesus. He said the sacrifice... The sacrifice. He said Jesus was in pain. But he didn't get off the cross. And in the middle of the height of his pain. He reaches down in his spirit. And pulls up a sacrifice of prayer. On the cross he started interceding for somebody else you better come over here now you better I said dying 
died on the cross, he reached in his spirit and went into intercession for somebody else. My surgery was scheduled for tomorrow. And I said, no. No. Mm -mm, not yet. Because I see something in the spirit. can't do it yet because you're on the brink of something. I can't do it yet. I can't go down yet because I'm going to say it again. You're on the brink of something. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. I know what I see in the spirit. You that are in this building today, you're on the brink of something. You're on the brink of tapping a ram in God that you have never possessed before. That's why the enemy has come to attack me. But the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Come on here, you gotta go for it. The devil is a liar. Every time, every time we get almost there, he come with something. You don't hear what I'm saying. Every time the prayer almost get all the way there, he come with something. But you better tell your neighbor, not this time. Not this time. Not this time. Somebody better give God a shout in here, not this time. Tuesdays. Will be sacrifice days. Tuesdays for the next 12 weeks. I hear the Spirit of the Lord said, make it your quiet days. 
There are days that you don't talk much at work. It's your sacrifice day. Days that you stay close to your word, that you read it on your lunchtime. Days that you don't let anybody pull you out of the spirit into anything. They want to argue about it, you're right, you can have it. Because today cannot be interrupted. Today, he said, make this a day of sacrifice to God. This day belongs to God. See, that's how we confuse him. Because he thinks we're going to do it on Sunday. We listen to our word. We get our worship tapes. We don't have much to say. Don't have a whole lot of conversation today on Tuesdays for the next 12 weeks. It is your sacrifice days. It is your sacrifice days. Tuesdays don't set anything carnal before your eyes. Give up television on Tuesdays. How many people going to be obedient? Because it's obedience. It's obedience. Giving up television on Tuesdays. Giving up carnal stuff on Tuesdays. Don't want to have a lot of conversation. I want to stay in my word. Because I'm strategizing in the spirit. I'm throwing my enemy off. We are on assignment and we got to be ready. Because I hear in the spirit of the Lord that there are some people that we need to pick up in the evenings. There are some people that can't make it to the 5 a.m. because of their work schedule. And you need to pick them up in the evenings. And when the Lord speak it, it's almost like an a angel on assignment and a messenger. When the Lord calls for the evenings, you have to find somebody to bring them. Because when he speaks it, he's speaking it for a purpose. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're going to get the job done this time. We're going to get the job done. And because the Lord will, will call it on assignment, we won't be advertising it. It'll just happen. And he will say tonight. And when he said tonight, He's talking to all of us in here that can, plus one. God is moving by his spirit in an awesome way. And he's heading the church to the realm of the supernatural. And if we don't go, we will not survive this age. If we don't come into the real power of faith and the real power of prayer, we won't survive this age. We will not make it. There are too many doors that are shut to us that we have no permission being in by way of our background aware of our family history but the Lord revealed to me last night that he is even causing this very day he is reversing every every generational curse he 
he's putting it in reverse. That was the first thing he spoke to me. The second thing he said to me, he is emptying out this very day. The incubation of Satan. Everything that he has in the incubation ready to throw at your life. God is emptying it out today. Now people, that's number two. Number three, unless you enter computers, you won't even understand what I'm about to say right here. But there are certain companies that have computer systems and they build the computer system and they build the building with a firewall. And a firewall hinders the transmission. You don't hear me. From anything foreign coming in. And I heard him say that to my spirit. I'm building an internal firewall in these people that are in prayer today. And that which was supposed to penetrate you, it will not have access. It'll hit your firewall and back up. Somebody give him a praise because that's your firewall. Somebody give him a sacrifice of praise because that is your firewall. Oh, your praise is different today. Your praise is different today. This ain't last Tuesday's prayer. This ain't last week's prayer. This is something that God has ordained. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Get your faith seed. Thank you, Jesus. Get your faith seed in your hand. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You got, all of you all that's got relatives that's across this country, tell them to go on the internet. Tell them to watch this prayer on the internet at 5 o'clock in the mornings. Because we're up Lincoln Live. It's www.ngbm, New Greater Bethel Ministries, dot org. New Greater Bethel Ministries, dot org. Just the first letters. NGBM. Dot org, New Greater Bethel Ministries. Dot org. Call your family in California. Call your family in Texas. Call your family wherever they are. And tell them get up with us at five o'clock in the morning. God is doing something massive. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. God, I feel your presence. You alone are all I need.
If you're the faith walker today, if you're the Levitical priesthood that the Lord has called this Tuesday to sow that $100, please come and get in the center aisle. Every week, he said he will call for the Levites. Every week, he will earmark somebody. He will speak to them, and they will sow it. Glory to your high name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, God. He said every week at a different times, different people, he will call out the Levites. That is the Levitical priesthood. that will give the sacrificial seed. The life of the Levite turned their lives over to the Lord. They were chosen to be God's people. What does the Levitical seed mean? It means these were people that were ordained by the Lord to maintain the upkeep of the temple. Hallelujah. And the Lord said to these, they offer up the sacrifice of their life Bible said, wherever a man's treasure is, there also lies his heart. So when you bring your treasure to the Lord, you offering up your life, then the Lord becomes your portion. That's what he said to the Levites. I am your portion. They were called to maintain the temple, to keep it clean, to make sure the oil was burning, to make sure that the showbread was there fresh, They were called to make the sacrifice. <coughs> he said every week, <coughs> new Levites would come. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody else, get a $20 or more consecration seat. Get it in your hand. Get it in your hand. We offer it up to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your high name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When you get it in your hand, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. your name Jesus let's just lift our hands for a minute in the place While you're worshiping, I wanted to make this announcement. You need to collect these 12 weeks. You need to collect these 12 weeks. When we get into revival mode and God speaks it, we, we don't have the capacity for you to come back 17 weeks later saying, can I have the one Tuesday that the lady preached on? We don't have the capacity for that. So I'm encouraging you. We will make an exception for next week. But I'm encouraging every person in this building, including myself, Catherine, make sure I have mine. Because we will see the mighty hand of God in these 12 weeks. These will be tapes that we need to keep in our archives that will cause us to believe God. Hallelujah. 
Halleluja. Halleluja. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Every person in this building, we will always offer up a sacrifice. Every person get a sacrificial seed in your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You want to go to the back? Turn and go to the back. Hallelujah. From this side of the building, go up that aisle to the back. We're going to come down this center aisle. lift that seed offering Father I pray even now for the Levites I pray because to them you became their portion I pray that they will see special increase for their sacrifice for we know now today Lord that the sacrifice is what pays the sacrifice is what guarantees us covenant and so, Father, we, we receive your promise based on the, what you've required us to sow in your presence. Now, God, bless these people. Bless them all over the building. Bless every home. Bless every heart. The seed that they're bringing, multiply it until it turns into surplus of prosperity. And we will not turn away from your word today, but we shall decree it and we shall declare it until we see the manifold wisdom and the manifold surplus of what you have promised us this day, this day. And we receive it by believing your word in Jesus mighty name let the people of God say amen amen and amen come and lay your seat on the altar center aisle if your row is your seat is here or there just turn around and go back up the center aisle you alone I am complete go down the center aisle if you can get into your row they'll excuse you you alone are all I need come on somebody help me sing that for you hold my destiny You alone In you alone I am complete Remember next, next Tuesday we're wearing white t-shirts with no writing White t-shirts with no designs and no writing on them, period. Completely white. Completely white. For you hold my destiny.
Come on, sing it like you mean it, everybody. Everybody, everybody. Come on, everybody, let me hear you. 